Hello, I am Bryant Mumble, and I am joined by Katja Lookin, the captain of the Naptown Roller Girls Tornado Sirens. And we're getting ready for the semifinal match between the Naptown Roller Girls and the Windy City Roller All-Stars. Now, you guys have, you're hosting this tournament. What has it been like this year coming into this tournament, hosting and playing in the tournament as well? You know, it's, it's two things. It's incredibly exciting. It is great to play at home. It's lovely being able to sleep in our own bed. Yeah. And it's been a lot of work. So it's, it's that, yeah. that extra luxury of sleeping in our own bed. We definitely earned it for putting in all the work to make this happen. Very fair. Uh, coming up, though, we have an exciting matchup, the semifinal round. What do you expect oh, to happen tonight in this matchup with Windy City? I expect this to be some of the most exciting derby oh, yeah. we're going to see all weekend. That's what I expect. Well, I, think I think that's a very good answer, and I cannot wait to see it. Danny Mack, Bryant Mumble, live in Indianapolis. The Indiana State, or the, or the Indiana Convention Center is the site of the North Central Region playoffs. And we have been live here all weekend. We will continue to bring this action to you tomorrow as well. And the reason I say Convention Center uh, instead of the normal place is the state fairgrounds. Unable to hold this, that's where Naptown ordinarily plays. So Indianapolis fans, you'll be kind of having a different view of things um, as these two teams meet. Windy City, number one in the region. Naptown, number four in the region. Naptown, the second appearance in the North Central Region Tournament, as well as and Windy City making their third appearance in, the, in tournament play. They did also perform in, before there was a North Region, they performed in the Eastern Region. And in the very first Dust Devil, there was no regionals at all. We just pretty much sent every team that wanted to compete in 2006, and Windy City was a part of that as well. Uh, we're seeing these two teams, a semifinal matchup. These two teams have met one other time, and that was in the regional playoff last season when uh, Naptown came in as the nine seed, and it was a quarterfinal match, and Windy City won that one. As Windy City has gone 21 and 0 so thus far in their entire career against North Central Region opponents. And as we look at some of the paths that both of these teams have taken, Windy City so far only one bout in this playoff under their belt, beating Arts Rival 200 to 82 yesterday in the 3 p.m. bout. Naptown, on the other hand, beat uh, one bout as well for them. They beat Cincinnati in the marquee bout last night, 166 to 113 to advance to play this. The winner will go on in the semifinal to face Minnesota. The loser will play Detroit Sunday afternoon at 4.20. Can't wait to find out who wins this game. We're about to see how it progresses. As we see Jackie Daniels jamming for the Windy City Rollers in the black and silver. Made in America going for the white. She's a Naptown jammer, 35-point jam in her career. Naptown leader, you'll hear the home crowd go crazy when they see the red, white, and blue flying past the opposite pack, uh, the opposite team's pack. Naptown will definitely have a home field advantage here as Made in America hits the pack, quickly making, jockeying her way through. She calls it off. We'll see how many points she's acquired. Two points. First blood drawn by the Naptown Roller Girls. It's important for Naptown to get out ahead and get that lead early. Chicago can put on points in bunches. Windy City again in the black. Naptown in the white with red trim. Amuse Bush to the line for Naptown. Zoe Trocious going for Windy City. Zoe Trocious in her first season as a Windy City Roller All-Star. It's her third year with the league, but this is the first time she's made it up to the All-Star level. And we are underway with a slow-moving pack here, Danny Mack. Yep, Amuse Bush dips around the left side and just does not get past enough to be but called lead jammer. The pack spreads apart. Ten feet called, and she is allowed to go. Moose Bush lead jam. Naptown, two lead jammers early to start this one off. And Zoe Trosh is getting rid out of bounds by Dora the Destroyer and able to recycle Zoe Trosh all the way back. Two Windy City blockers tried to knock her out of bounds but could not do so as Amuse Bush now on another scoring pass. It's a four-wall versus a four-wall here. Serial killer, Dora the Destroyer, Majestic, and I'ma hurt you in the rear of the pack, working on Zoe Trocious. Meanwhile, Amuz Bush, one more grand slam. Naptown out 12 to nothing early in this action. 
So Naptown looking good early on. Zoe Trocious finally clears the pack. Amuz Bush is going to get one more crack at the pack. As a, once again, we got a four wall versus a four wall. Windy City has claimed the front of the pack. So far, it is holding as Zoe Trocious coming on up to the pack. Amuz Bush calls it off. Wise play by Bush and serial killer Dora the Destroyer helped her out for those eight points. And Naptown early leading 14 to nothing. Nice swing for the Tornado Sirens. The hometown Indianapolis crowd riled up. We're going to see two big names coming up to the jammer line right now. That is Varla Vendetta for the Windy City Rollers in black. And that is Willa Hoflinch for the Naptown Roller Girls in white and red trim. If you ask me Willa Hoflinch, I will have to say yes, they will. Willa goes for the outside, gets shoved out of bounds by Yvette, your maker. Now she's working her way through. Windy City getting pushed out of bounds early and often. Varla Vendetta then dips inside, will not be lead jammed. She touched the outside of the track, making her pass. Thus, she won't be able to call this one off. Willa Hoflinch still unable to score. Varla Vendetta going for the outside. She has five points. And Varla Vendetta picked up a minor track cut on the outside. Only a minor, though. And we got a lead jammer. It's for Naptown. Willa Hoflinch gets lead jammer. And she's going to keep going here. Varla Vendetta's going to check. Got it. I think she caught the pack. Two more points for Windy City, despite not having lead jammer. 14 to 6 in the early going. This bout, bout brought to you in part by Dr. Hauschka. They celebrate the fresh, fresh faces, I have trouble with SHs, of the WFTDA. Stop by their booth and get your fresh face. And Dr. Hauschka is WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka outshade. You'll see Windy City take a knee that intentionally destroys the pack, thus allowing the jammers to only have the front of the pack to deal with. It sort of, sort, sort of shortens the playing field and a power jam on the way, blocking the back called on Beth Amphetamine, who heads off. So Windy City now moves completely into defensive mode as Majestic gets recycled to the back of the pack, but now she's got some momentum here. Georgia on your behind, not able to slow her down. She gets through and lead jammer. Majestic, a brand new Naptown Roller girl. She joined this team from Fort Wayne. She as well as uh, Rip Tide coming to this team from Fort Wayne, coming down I-69. They actually commute to play on Naptown. They drive two hours to practice and abouts just to play for the Tornado Sirens. And a five-pointer on the way for Majestic. Yes, indeed, five more points for Majestic. As this pack crawling now, Windy City could not just take off. They would get intentionally destroying the pack. So. George on your behind with a nice block there, riding Majestic to the inside. We mentioned Naptown grabbing players like Majestic and Riptide. They also add Haterade to the roster from Black and Blue Grass. And they, they are trying to fill the roles of six players as the, bout, the jam is called off here by Majestic. Two more points on the board for Naptown to put them up 21-16, but Naptown trying to fill the void of six players lost since the 2010 North Central Region Tournament, Sweet C, their pivot, the last original Naptown Roller Girl to retire from this Tornado Siren Squad. As we line them up again, we see Yvette, your maker. She missed 2010 with a knee injury, but the Windy City Rollers are very happy to have her back, and she is wearing the Jammer Star now for the, for the black team. Jammer on Jammer action right out of the gate. Yvette, your maker, going after Made in America. Then she got punished by... Maiden's pivot, Anaslasia. Already Yvette, your maker, around turn two, and here she comes on the pack. Got a nice hole filled by her blockers, Amy No Amy, and she has five points to cut the lead to 10 for Naptown. Uh, Naptown having a little bit of a penalty issues right now. Only two blockers in their pack as Jackie Daniels is pounding away on Naptown's jammer out there, Maiden America. And Amy No Namey lays a hit as well. This is her first spout of the weekend. And Made in America in the penalty box. A power jam with only two block blockers out there. This known in Minnesota as a minivan jam. Two in the front, <laughs> five in the back. Great terminology. Here she comes for five more. Yvette, your maker. And if you're new to the sport, 
as a player passes the other player's hips, that's how a point scored, and the only player that can do that is the jammer. When an opposing jammer is in the penalty box, or an opposing player for that matter, for every point scored, they automatically get those points added to them. So every time your vet, your maker gets around, because Naptown has two players in the box, two points automatically go on the board for every player she passes. Huge jam here for Yvette, your maker, although she's getting called on for cutting the track. I believe on the outside, called by the inside ref. She did. I'm a hurt you. Laid her out, pushed her out of bounds, and as soon as Yvette, your maker, hit the seats, then that allowed Maiden America to come through. She will, Yvette, your maker, will serve the remainder of what Maiden America had left on her penalty. Maiden. Fierce competition from Captain Jackie Daniels got shoved out of bounds, has to recycle all the way to the rear of the pack behind Jackie Daniels to avoid the same penalty your vet, your maker, just got the cut the track penalty. Two minutes are up. That concludes the jam. Two minutes awarded to Windy City's jammer before she went to the penalty box. We just see that now at the end of the jam. Two more points for Naptown. That will give them 23. And uh, Windy City, 20. Actually, those two points go on for Windy City. So 28 to 21, uh, uh, Maiden America never even got an opportunity to score points. This exciting match on WFTDA.com is brought to you by Elemental Technologies, the world's, the world's most powerful video pr processing solutions. First lead change of the bout. May, another lead jam coming for Amuz Bush. Bush spun out of bounds by Tori Adore. Has to reset behind her. Majestic trying to provide a lead block in a sea of black jerseys as these packs segregate. So Windy City able to recycle her back in. Now they claim the front of the pack. So this is still the initial pass, even though she does have lead jammer status. Majestic still trying to clear a path, trying to work on Georgia on your behind, and Georgia giving her own behind to make sure that that does not happen. Yvette, your maker has been released from the penalty box. She is now engaging the pack on her initial pass as well. We do have a lead jammer declared, however. And we got a penalty on Naptown. That's Ima Hurt You. Yvette, your maker, makes her way out of the box, and she has yet to be able to score. Now she can. Made her initial pass. She is now able to score points as soon as she passes a white jersey. That would be points for her. Amuse Bush, on the other hand, Still struggling to make her points. Off the track, Amy No Namey has been released from the penalty box. However, she has not re-entered the pack. She did not want to be isolated. She didn't want to be a goat for the Windy City Rollers. But four more points there for the Naptown Roller Girls. Narrowing the gap. We got a 28 to 25 point game here in the early goings. We're 10 minutes into this semifinal matchup on WFTDA.com. Brought to you in part by Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA. North Central Regional uh, Region Tournament here in Indianapolis, the Indiana State Convention Center. Very nice layout here. Uh, two stands set out on either side. Their ordinary spot would be the Pepsi Coliseum, a little bit farther north if you know Indianapolis. And the second meeting of these two teams, both meetings happened in tournament play last year. The first shot and Blue Messiah on her first jam this evening, grabs lead jam for Naptown in the white. Huge collisions in turn four. Dora the, the Destroyer took out Zoe Trocious and then Jackie Daniels took Dora out and Jackie Daniels leveling people, creating a hole for Zoe Trocious as now we got a scoring pass here for the Naptown Roller Girls and Blue Messiah. Blue Messiah, quick work on the outside. Got past old Dirty Go-Go and had one more player to work past and did. She called for three, but wants five points. She's only going to get three on that one. Not too happy about it. She wants more points. A lot of intensity as we have a tie game once again, 28 to 28. Yeah, this would be the second lead change of the bout, whoever manages to come on top of this one. And if you'd like to comment about Mumble and my work, head to Twitter, go to the hashtag talk to WFTDA. That's talk the number two WFTDA. As we see Beth and Fetamine jamming now for the Windy City Rollers against Made in, Made in America. She gets through for lead jammer status. Made in America has scored 35 points in a single jam, and she wants to do that right this second. And she might a power jam 
on the way for Indianapolis. A cutting the track penalty on Beth Amphetamine. Only two blockers out there for Windy City, a minivan jam. Sargentina and Hoosier Mama gonna try and kill as much of this penalty as they can, but Made in America pushing those blockers outside the engagement zone. Five point grand slam as Naptown retakes the lead, 33 to 28. Made in America got, uh, got the points there because Naptown decided to put on the brakes, force the pack to be spread apart, thus forcing Windy City to have to allow Made in America to go through. She's going to do it the old fashioned way here, fighting past Sargentina among others and get five more on the board to bring Naptown's lead to a full double digit 10 points. Fourth minor penalty on one of the Naptown blockers. That's gonna be majestic as here comes Maiden America one more time. Maiden getting help from I'ma Hurt You and Katya Lookin, as well as Serial Killer. This is about as veteran a blocking crew as Naptown can put out there. They're the number one team, if, if you'd like to use terms like that, along with Majestic, who's on the bench. The home crowd definitely rallying on the Naptown Roller Girls. The home field advantage definitely coming into play here. Two lead changes in this one. Uh, Naptown grabbing back the lead. They started off two to nothing, went up 12 to four, and held it all the way to Windy City. On the fifth bout, went up 20, or the fifth jam rather, went up 28 to 21 for their only hold on the lead. They held it for three jams before Naptown took it back and now lead 42 to 28. A door opened up for Varla Vendetta. She is your lead jammer for the Windy City Roller All-Star. She scored 90 points in the quarterfinal round against St. Louis. Excuse me, 90? She scored 90 points of 200 for Windy City Rollers yesterday as she approaches the pack on her scoring pass. My oh my. She came up on Anna Slasia. Anna dug into her and they both fell down. Asian sensation heading out to the sin bin for Naptown. Majestic standing up for the team in white. And meanwhile, some nice blocking by Toriador and Georgia on you behind. Holding back a moose Bush as Varla Vendetta scores four points. Yeah, Bush trying also to get past old dirty Go-Go. A lot of really, really good one-on-one -on -one booty blocking going on by Windy City. Bush makes it through. She can now score points. Varla Vendetta, I think, is working on job one. Let's get through the pack and then call it off as she does. Four more points for Varla Vendetta. 42 to 36 early here in this uh, first half. This bout brought to you by Rydell Skates, proud partner and official skate of the WFTDA. As well, look for Trigger in the crowd and sign up for a free set of wheels from rollergirlskates.com. Nice hitting so far, and for the most part, these teams have kept their noses clean. That's sort of one of the keys to the game, Mumble, is these teams really need to keep out of the penalty box. It's kind of a, a basic thing to say, but we've seen throughout this playoff that penalties absolutely murder a team, and it's all self-inflicted. And we've got a lead jammer at you, vet your maker for the Windy City Rollers. As Willa Hoflinch trying to clear the pack as well. Who's your mama, the last line of defense for the Windy City Rollers. Willa got a nice lead block by Shady Lane, who's strafed in front of the black jersey, allowing Willa to make it through. The event your maker clears the pack, scores four more points, making it a two-point game, and calls off the jam. Have you been smacked by rollergirlskates.com yet? No. Have you, you should be by rollergirls.skates.com. I will right now. Schmack. Talk to Wifta is the hashtag you want to follow if you have any comments or questions for us. I'm Danny Mack along with Bryant Mumble here in Indianapolis. That's hashtag talk, the number two WFTDA on Twitter. Made in America to the line. She will face Beth Amphetamine. Beth Amphetamine having a couple, some trouble this in this bout. She's getting cutting the track penalties. Let's see how she does in this jam. Very grinding pack right now. It's a four wall versus four wall. This is the kind of action that the fans have come to see. And if you just saw Asian Sensation turn backwards and actually skate backwards, that's because she had shoved a Windy City player out of bounds. It's a little bit of tactic there as she backs up. 
Windy City player, in order to avoid cutting the track, has to back up behind her and start from there. Jackie Daniels is a one-woman wall at the front of the pack. Holding off Made in America, but she got uh, Made in America got an assist from Shady Lane. Was able to clear the pack as Beth Amphetamine still in the pack on her initial pass. Brilliant teamwork by Naptown blocking, and one of their favorite strategies is to sort of bunch up and then just allow the pack to drift to a direction, drift towards the inside or the outside, and only their jammer knows where that heads, and they hit that hole and are able to get through, and as soon as they hit the hole, hole closes up, and that creates an impenetrable barrier for any other blockers. Windy City holding now as Old Dirty Go-Go goes to the penalty box. I, we'll see how many points awarded. Two points, one for passing Old Dirty. I'm, is that two or three? That's three points. That's three. One of, it's European style. They hold the thumb up to mean three. One of those was a ghost point for the skater in the penalty box for a skater out of play. So 45 to 40 is Naptown's lead. This is their first lead they've ever taken against Windy City. And I say ever, these teams have played twice. Twice. And they had one earlier in the game. They did. Yes. Uh, but this is the first the, the first sustained lead that Naptown gotcha. has held against Windy City. And what an accomplishment that is. Windy City, what did you say, 20? 21 and 0 against North Region opponents, North Central Region opponents. So quite an accomplishment working so far for Naptown Tornado Sirens here in Indianapolis, their home city. The event your maker trying to stay in bounds but not able to do so. And we got a lead jammer from Naptown. Majestic clears the, the pack. The Fort Wayne transfer. Majestic, a triple threat player. You can see her with the pivot stripe with the jammer star. And Five yep. points on the way for Majestic. You bet your maker is completely stymied by the Naptown pack right now. Having a hard time getting through. And Amy Nonami with a jammer takedown for Windy City on Majestic. And you bet your maker clears the pack on her initial pass. A very hard fought way through the pack. Three on three in the pack right now as Majestic getting back up. Door the Destroyer, Evel, serial killer. Forming a three wall in the back that allowed Majestic to grab two more points at the very end of that one, extending Naptown's lead to 12. And that ties for their bout high with a 12 point lead. We're at a timeout now. If you're on in the bracket game on WFTDA, there are only nine perfect brackets remaining. So nine people have picked every bout thus far this weekend. I'm impressed if you did. You picked St. Louis and Outfit to play twice. Yes. <laughs> what, what were you thinking? You know, if we saw that at the end, we'd say, what were you thinking? But now we're saying, what were you thinking as in, how can we harness that knowledge? Yes, how can indeed. we be as smart as you are? It is the second time that's happened this year where two teams played each other twice in the same tournament. So we'll see that tomorrow. Well, this North Central region, for the most part, as of day one, had shaken out exactly as designed. Not a single upset in day one, but boy, you get to day two, and it has been upset city. We've had four of them thus far. Out of five games, there's been four upsets. So we're about ready to line up again here. It is Varla Vendetta wearing the black Jammer Star. And a pivot, a star pass. <laughs> Amuz Bush gave it to Dora the Destroyer, the pivot. Because the star was past her, she cannot be lead jam. And Varla Vendetta is lead jammer, and she's going to call it off. Interesting Trickery. tactic. <laughs> it's the first time I have seen that particular tactic where the jammer just handed yep. the, the star across with everyone lining up right against the jam line. It says, here, go. Yep. I've seen Naptown do it three times total. And that is the first time it's actually worked. The other couple of times they didn't do it legally. And it's a difficult thing to do because you have to, for one, it has to go from the jammer to the pivot. Correct. And only. And then the star has to be put on correctly as you're trying to skate I am, or else they can't be the jammer once I am it's curious on. about the jammers were never released is my question. That's, but we'll, we'll figure that out. As Beth Amphetamine jamming now against Blue Messiah. If nothing else, it wore off a little bit of clock for Naptown as they continue to lead 52 to 40, their largest lead against Windy City. Huge hits going around turns one and two. 
Windy City in the front. That's an advantage for Blue Messiah. Pushing them forward. She gets through for lead jammer. Beth Amphetamine had it cutting the track, and it's going to be a major cutting the track. Power jam. No, for it's a Blue minor, Messiah. minor, minor. Oh, 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 hey, oh. She started to go cool off the track. Cool my jets there, Haas. I thought it was a major myself. But. <laughs> I trusted you, Mumble. I, uh, my bad. First penalty on me as Blue Messiah scores some points. We'll see how many. I did not see how many. Evidently none. We're awaiting the signal, I believe. Some discussion between our referees. Well, the bottom line is here, Naptown, at one point, will go on the board. So their largest lead at 53 to 40. But uh, early on in this one, Naptown took the lead. They relinquished it in the fifth jam to Windy City, who held it for three jams. Then Naptown grabbed it back at 42 to 28 and have not looked back yet. We have eight and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Yvette, your maker, takes the line, immediately gets lead jammer status. A majestic still in the pack, but she now quickly cl cl clears the pack. Yvette, your maker, hitting the pack now on her scoring pass, gets ridden out of bounds by Dora. The destroyer calls off the jam. Did she do so in time? Three points for Windy City, zero for Naptown. So it's a 10 point game here, 53 to 43 in this match, brought to you by Erie Insurance. Keep you covered with seriously good insurance. That's Erie Insurance. Naptown has left four points on the board so far for Windy City when Naptown had a lead jam and decided not to call it off or just failed to see the Windy City jammer come back up on the rear of the pack and a couple of mental lapses have cost them four points. They still lead by 10. Zoe Trocious takes an intentional fourth minor for the Windy City Roller, so it's one blocker down for both jam both teams, and this jam has begun. Jackie Daniels, Made in America. The jam has begun, but if you see it almost not moving, that's a tactic where a, a uh, they will intentionally just sort of show how the pack's going to end up, which gives jammers nice vision and lets them go around like Jackie Daniels did. Made in America right on her rear, about a quarter of a track and gaining on the veteran Jackie Daniels. Windy City, hit. Jackie hits the pack, passes two blockers, gets three points, one of those a ghost point for the blocker in the penalty box. Narrowing that gap, it is now a seven point game. We'd like to thank Outside the Lines, a new kind of t-shirt, thanks to Spenlin. Thank you, Spenlin. Delicious. Windy City beating Arch Rival yesterday, 20 to 82. 200. I'm sorry, yes. wow, I missed the zero. 200 to 82. As you said, 90 of those points scored by Jammer Varla Vendetta, and uh, that's how they arrive at this spot. Naptown, on the other hand, got here with a 166 to 113 victory over Cincinnati last evening, and Cincinnati has been uh, kind of surprising and, and not in the good way this time. Uh, they've Lost to Naptown, kind of expected. You got the 4-5. That's almost a toss-up. But then beating Ohio early this morning and losing to Arch Rival. We'd like to thank Union Vacations. They, Union Vacations is proud to provide the 2011 WFTDA MVP with a one-week getaway to Mexico. Very exciting from Union Vacations. Also thanks to Dr. Hauschka. Stop by the Dr. Hauschka booth and check their amazing bruise healing and skin care products. Pack whistle has gone. Naptown creeping forward. Windy City holding Pat, staying in the rear of the pack. And Amuse Bush just sort of staying back, looking at what was set up, and then she made her move. She's a high school basketball player, a high school all-star in her uh, high school career. And we saw the quick moves in the lane there for a moose boosh And Beth Amphetamine hot on her tail, a former boxer and current trapeze artist as the pack, as she quickly calls it off. One point for Windy City and two points for Naptown. 55 to 47, Naptown's eight point lead. They've led by as many as 13 in this one. And Windy City had a brief lead of seven points. That's their largest lead. Naptown started this one off up two to nothing. Got the lead up to 10 points uh, at 21 to 11. 
before Windy City clawed their way back at 28 to 21. They took the lead and Naptown has held it ever since jam number seven where it was tied at 28 points. Made in America tacked on 14 then and got Naptown the lead which they still hold. The WFTDA would like to thank the following tournament partners, Green Monster Roller Sports, Fast Girl Skates, Five Stride, Sun King, Derby Supply, Flat Track Revolution, Derby for All, and Nuvo. Couple of key storylines we sort of came into the bout talking about. Windy City undefeated in the North Central, a team that just strikes fear, frankly, into the hearts of every team. But what Naptown has going for them, a home crowd, they also have that underdog status, which you really can't replace something like that. Playing from, really from uh, uphill like that is something that absolutely cannot be replaced. We just got tweeted, Danny Mac, at, with the hashtag talk, the number two WFTDA. Void DJ is enjoying the late night derby action from across the pond. Interesting to see tactics of no pack off the line all the time. Yep. Welcome to tournament play. Welcome to the playoffs, baby. We're calling that the chicken brick, I do believe. That's the term <laughs> I have heard called. So if you have anything to add, talk the number two WFTDA on Twitter. 55 to 47, the Naptown lead early. It'll be Made in America and Jackie Daniels going for this squad. Made in America, the very finest jammer that Naptown can roll out. Had 14 points already in a single jam, but also was saddled with a little penalty trouble early on. Another storyline we're following is, can these teams keep their noses clean? Throughout this playoff, the team that is penalized less or has managed to just not go tit for tat with penalties has generally been the team that has won, and the team that's penalized a lot is the team that really manages not to score points. So penalties a big key. And both these teams, for the most part, have really kept it out of the penalty box. I'd like to thank some of our sponsors here. Protec Dent Mouthguards, the first thoroughly scientific mouthguard for the Derby player. Also, take your league to the next level with Skate Court, Roller Derby, Flat Tracks. And check out No Mercy, the new Derby photo book from Jules Axel Adam Doyle. And I'll tell you what, if you have 20 bucks lying around, some of the best money you will spend is the high quality stream on WIFTA.com. If you're not already looking at that, we saw a shot earlier with Dump Truck. If you had the high quality stream, you would see an eyebrow that Dump, dump Truck did not pluck. That you, is some nice quality streaming right there. Do you want to see that? No, no, I don't. But I, I, I want to see this action in high quality streaming. So do I, but evidently a three and a half minute and counting powwow at the center of the track going on for both of these teams. And I could tell that it's Dr. Vroom sort of gathering these teams. And Dr. Vroom, if, if you've seen her as an official before, is one of the more deliberate, demonstrative refs out there. She is very teacherly in how she describes things. Actually, she is a teacher. That is her and profession. You can tell. <laughs> She's a Montessori school teacher by trade. And uh, she was the WFTDA championship head referee last year in the championship game in 2009. She was the head referee for that game. She is remarkably thorough. And yeah, I think is. the players really respect that. Again, to recap this one, Naptown went out 2 to nothing early on. Chicago was able, or Windy City rather, able to tie it up in the fifth jam as this thing's about ready to get back underway when Naptown took the lead back at 42-28. Uh, to 28. Varla Vendetta takes an intentional fourth minor on that one, and she had three minor penalties. She did not want to be a jammer with, sitting with three minor penalties, and Jackie Daniels gets through the pack. She is your lead jammer for the Windy City Roller All-Stars. Down eight points. Made in America now able to score points. She dipped herself around Tori Adore. Jackie Daniels already up on the rear of the pack with Made in America still darn near an entire track length behind her. Jackie Daniels making pretty quick work of the two blockers in the pack, only two blockers from each team. 
out there. So 55 to 51 right now. Piper Sonic and I'm a hurt you stuck on Blocker Island. Piper Sonic, relatively new to the Tornado Siren squad. We saw her debut against uh, as a Tornado Siren against Detroit. Naptown lost that one, but Piper Sonic got a little bit of playing time, got a little bit of time actually as a jammer. And with the position left by the retiring Sweet C, the pivot position is up in the air for this Naptown Tornado Siren squad. That long timeout we had was due to a, a the jam never actually started, and they were trying to sort that out as the jam whistle was blown, but the jammers were never released. And uh, I, I'm not <laughs> sure I understand it myself, but uh, they reset, and the jam ended without the jammer the four whistles being blown. So this jam is currently underway with Yvette, your maker, and Amuse Bouche standing on the line. And we're about to get it going here. Windy City able to get Varla Vendetta out of the penalty box due to this delay. And a directional penalty, minor, being picked up by one of the skaters out there. Let's see, we are 45 seconds into this one, and we are now underway in earnest. Amuse Bush going for Naptown. The Windy City jammer takes a tumble. And, and she's going to the penalty box. Bush got her way around Varla Vendetta, who's in the pack this time. That's a backlock major on Yvette, your maker. Ima Hertz, looks a little shaken up out there, but she's continuing to skate on. Only two lead changes in this one. Naptown, the benefactor of most of the point scoring from Power Jams. Well, Varla Vendetta had a little confusion. She thinks she's going to the penalty box, but she's not. She's supposed to be back on the track, but she's skating around. She's thinking she's got to go to the penalty box. And she's still waiting for uh, the official to tell her. Nobody seems to be signaling to her. She's still, and I, I got I to gotta shake my head with her. I didn't see anybody signal to her. I saw the initial whistle, but then no repeat call. I guess the officials aren't obliged to do that, but you generally do see them give the repeat call. Varla Vendetta sat all the way down, but now she's back on the track. She was not supposed to go to the penalty box. Okay. As Amuj Bush has been scoring points while we were sorting out what was going on with Varla Vendetta. 60 to 51 for Naptown. Bush falls out of bounds, and this one ticks off for the natural two minutes. Two more points on the board for Bush. That's the boo kind of sound that you're hearing from the audience. They love her. As they should. They're the hometown. I'll tell you, Windy City traveled pretty well as well. Filling up uh, a good quadrant of the suicide seating here in the Indiana Convention Center. Downtown Indianapolis. Monumental Mayhem, the name of this 2011 North Central Region Playoffs. I'm Danny Mack along with Bryant Mumble. Talk to WFTDA is our Twitter if you want to make some comments or uh, snide remarks about us, Indianapolis, uh, Naptown, the number four seed, Windy City, Chicago, the number one seed, playing here in the marquee Saturday night bout. Naptown is the host, and thus they get the uh, choice of the two marquee bouts. They played last night at 7.30. They play again tonight at 7.30. Winner will face Minnesota tomorrow at 6.20. The loser will face Detroit tomorrow at 4.20. I got to tell you, I see Made in America out there. She's got to love a shiny hiney, and Derby Skins loves making your hiney shiny. And also, Sin City Skates, they are the big five skate techs. They'll fix your gear or chat about new stuff. You can check out SinCitySkates.com. Naptown leading by 11. They've led by as many as 13. And you see a couple of Naptown skaters taking a knee. That intentionally destroys the pack. Often they'll kind of fake their way out of that. Well, it's not really destroying the pack. There is no pack yet right, when right. The jam, until the jam starts. And actually, there is no pack speed as well. You're seeing some people this weekend where three of four blockers will take a knee and one blocker will take off establishing the pack speed, and then there is no pack. And they have yet to actually call this one. They're still in a timeout discussing... Kind of clarifying for each other, I think, getting on the same page about a call they made earlier. I don't think it's anything that's going to affect the score. But the story for Naptown this season has been overcoming changes. Six players from last season's team, last season's tournament team, their first appearance in playoff play. 
will uh, are not playing anymore. They've retired. Sweet C, the headliner among those. That, uh, Pivot, the last original Naptown Tornado Siren. A 13 and two regular season record for them. 10 and two in the North Central. And we're about ready to go here. It's going to be made in America and a power jam, but Yvette, your maker, is standing in the penalty box. That means she has under 10 seconds to go on her penalty. Here she is. She is now released. Sargentina, fierce booty block initially to keep Made in America at bay. Then she let her go and then laid into her, but Made in America fought through and will get lead jam in the home floor. And Yvette, your maker, is right on her back. Under two minutes in this first half. That last time out, uh, Varla Vendetta had an insubordination major, and she failed to leave the track. There was a lot of confusion with yeah, Varla Vendetta. Really was. She was getting waved back on the track by many referees. Well, However, that she was given an insubordination penalty for not leaving the track. So uh, quite a bit of confusion there with Varla Vendetta. Boosh riling up the Naptown crowd. The faithful on their feet in the Indiana Convention Center, a place that Naptown has only played one bout. Early this season, they sort of tested this area in a bout that they won against Arch Rival. Normally, they play in the Pepsi Coliseum. Amuz Bush takes off with the jam whistle. And another power jam. You vet your maker in the penalty box once again. 64 to 51 is the lead for the Naptown Roller Girls as we get a whip for Amuz Bush. As we got a three wall and a three wall, the pack somewhat split, so they gotta let her go. Naptown hung back, forcing the pack to spread apart 10 feet, allowing Amuz Bush to become lead jam. Fourth minor penalty on Ima Hurt You. I bet it was for destroying the pack. So she will join Dora the Destroyer in the box. One player in the box for, uh, for, uh, uh, for Windy City, rather. That causes the power jam we're seeing right now with Amuz Bush. And a whip assist, almost a whip from yep. Majestic. Majestic, the pivot. We've seen a few pivots be, uh, trying out for Naptown. We even saw rookie Piper Sonic. They're calling some penalties on Naptown for breaking the pack, slowing down too much. And that's Majestic heading for some pine time. Other than that, Naptown has another player in the box that's Co-captain, I'm a hurt you. This jam will end due to injury. Serial killer is down for Naptown in the middle of the track. CK, one of the toughest players around. And she is on all fours being tended to by the Naptown and also the Windy City staff. Jay Roller helping her up, her coach. Sin Lizzie as well out there to help her out. Former teammates and two scoops and heads to the bench. She is a tough one. That will bring us to the halftime. The halftime so score, I think, a surprise to a lot of people. Naptown winning 68 to over Windy City Roller All-Stars, 51, a 17-point lead for the four seed. The home team trying to pull off the upset. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen on Upset Saturday at the North Central Region Playoff. 68-51, to 51, Naptown started off with the lead. There's only been two lead changes. It has more or less been all Naptown in this first half. Leading scores for Naptown, Made in America. She had a 14-point jam. Largest lead is what you're seeing right now, 17 points by the Naptown Tornado Sirens. We are about to rejoin the action in the second half of play between the Windy City Roller All-Stars and the Naptown Roller Girls. The Naptown Roller Girls leading 68 to 51 at the halftime. And this exciting match brought to you by Dr. Hauschka, the official bruise healer of the WFTDA. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka, ouch aid. And Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solution. Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA, and Rydell Skates, proud partner and official skate of the WFTDA. If you've just come from uh, outside or something and you're looking at the score and you wonder, is that really right? Yes, it is. Naptown, the number four seed, up 68 to 51 against number one seed and undefeated 
Windy City. I talked to Naptown Captain Katya looking at the half. She's as cool as a cucumber, but says it ain't over yet. It is definitely not over. The Windy City Rollers, a veteran team. They, they, their motto is be cool. It's cool, and they will try to regroup here as Jackie Daniels jamming. She is your lead jammer for the Windy City Roller All-Stars. Naptown's going to find out real quick if they poke the beehive here. If Windy City comes out of this one with guns ablaze and Jackie Daniels on the right side gets past Dora the Destroyer and five points. Meanwhile, Maiden America in the white, uh, Naptown White still struggling to make her way through and allow herself to get some scoring. And Jackie Daniels now on her second scoring pass. Old Dirty Go-Go and Who's Your Mama holding off Made in America. Jackie Daniels gets through, and now she's playing some defense by the looks of things. Who's Your Mama hit Made in America, but Made in America sustained it, and Who's Your bounced off. So Jackie Daniels has had two scoring passes. Made in America has had one, and we're going to end the jam there. It is a 10 total point jam. 68 to 61, now a seven point game after one jam. Jack, go ahead. Yeah, Jackie Daniels starting this one off right for Windy City. Windy City, as we said, the number one seed, Naptown the four seed. There's been a series of upsets today. So if that trend continues, and as as I said, as Captain, uh, as, uh, Captain Katya looking for Naptown said, it ain't over yet, baby. Uh, an update on an injury as well. Serial killer towards the end of the half went down. She is okay. She will be playing again. Uh, the, the unofficial, we'll just word it this way, a skate to the hinder. And the jam is underway. It's Varla Vendetta versus Amouge Bouche for the team in white. The Naptown Roller Girls. Varla Vendetta gets through. However, she is not your lead jammer. She had a minor track cut, so Amouge Bouche can still get lead jammer status. And she does. She immediately calls it off with a hop and a skip keeping the score right where it is with a seven point lead. Two minutes into the second half of play. I'm Danny Mack along with Bryant Mumble. Throw out your comments out there. I'm sure you got them. Talk to WFTDA. That's on Twitter, the hashtag talk, the number two, WFTDA. And you can also hashtag WFTDA Big Five as well. If you're into that sort of thing. We are underway here. Zoe Trocious for the Windy City Rollers in black against Blue Messiah for the Naptown Roller Girls in white. It's a three wall in the front for Naptown holding off Zoe Trocious and a three wall in the back trying to hold off Blue Messiah. It's just all jammers on their own. Zoe Trocious wins that battle. She is pumped up as she clears the pack. Nice work and hear that WCR crowd get behind their gals. This place is about a quarter filled with WCR fans. Zoe Trocious now on her scoring pass. She clears the pack, calls it off. Windy City getting a little bit pumped up here, 68 to 66 so far. Naptown has not scored in the second half. It's early though, just past three minutes. Yeah, going into the half, it was 68 to 51. That was Naptown's largest lead. So if you like to chart things and you like to see how a trend goes, Naptown began the, the bout leading two to nothing. They got that lead all the way uh, up to a 28 to 25 margin before Windy City tied it up at 28 apiece. Then Naptown took the lead at 42, to, uh, 52 to 40 and haven't looked back. And we see Beth and Fenamine jimming against Willa Hoflinch. Willa Hoflinch near the front of the pack. It's hit by Who's Your Mama. She's getting near the front. Who's your mama with a, a hit? It's gonna cause a block to the head on Who's Your Mama penalty. So Willa Hoflinch now one blocker to beat. That's old dirty go go. She is your, Willa Hoflinch is your lead jammer. But ridden out of bounds by old dirty go go, and but it's outside the engagement zone. So penalty issues here for Windy City and Naptown. It's a micro pack, two on two in the pack. Willa Hoflinch is the lead jammer. Beth on amphetamine, amphetamine, about a quarter track behind. Willa Hoflinch, if you look at the way she skates, it is just absolutely textbook form. That's because she is a champion speed skater. And you can tell not just by the speed, but by that perfect form. No points, great defense. Nice block by Deb Autry. Deb Autry ended that jam by taking Willa Hoflinch out of bounds. Windy City has managed to nullify the two lead jams Naptown has garnered in this second half. 
keeping them at bay with a zero score there, but already we've seen a different attitude, at least from Windy City. They are playing much more aggressive in this second half. They came out firing, going up, uh, uh, grabbing 10 points early and grabbing five more, so a 15 to nothing run in the second half in the team for the team in black, Windy City. A very small pack as a made in America able to get through for lead jammer statics and the crowd roars as Varla Vendetta going to the penalty box. Uh, I think insubordination, I think. Which would be her second insubordination call. So Varla getting uh, kind of lippy at least in the eyes of the officials and Made in America taking care of business, getting five points. Naptown, no one in the penalty box. Windy City, three players. And we're going to add a fourth, but we can't really add a f Actually, now Jackie Daniels going to the box, so we're going to get some blockers rotating in and out as two blockers are rejoining the pack. Made in America on a scoring pass. Low block, major on Yvette, your maker. So they will remain two blockers in the penalty box. My, oh, my, I erased what I said. Windy City had kept very clean for the first five jams of this bout. Now really, really getting overly aggressive. Five more points on the board for Naptown. Extending their lead to 20, or I'm sorry, to 12. As Chicago came into this having a narrow two point lead, five more points for Made in America, her highest point total in a single jam this bout. Hoosier Mama has collected a fourth minor penalty. She has to stay on the track as the penalty box is full for Windy City. You can only have two blockers in at one time. So huge penalty issues for Windy City. Varla Vendetta comes out of the penalty box, roars right through the pack with a huge amount of speed on her initial pass. Gonna try and limit some damage here. Made in America racking up some points. It's been a nice little battle between Hoosier Mama and just about any Naptown jammer. She has been one-on-one -on -one for most of the time. She's playing towards the front of the pack. Pack spread apart and it's kind of a, a jammer island for, so to speak, for Hoosier Mama. And she's been up to the task for more points for Naptown. It's 87 to 66. With the penalty issues piling up for Windy City, this crowd is roaring, getting behind the Naptown Roller Girls. Windy City, the wheel's coming off a little bit here. That's the first scoring for Naptown in this second half, if you can believe that. So this jam has begun. Both teams have two blockers in the penalty box. And the pausing allows Yvette, your maker, to come out of the penalty box. It's going to be Zoe Trocious for Whitney City in black against Amuz Bush in white with red trim. Amuz trying to dance around, but a double wall put up by Windy City in the back. Bush got a jump and is one on one with Jackie Daniels at the front of the pack. And Jackie Daniels has a cut, I believe, cutting the track. Jackie Daniels knocked her out of bounds and then recycled to the back, but uh, Moose Bush did not catch that, so it's a power jam for Zoe Trocious. But she is on her initial pass here. Three on three in the pack now. It's only the second time that Naptown has had uh, has given a power jam opportunity to Windy City. It's the four, and four times as opposed to Windy City's four times if that, uh, given Naptown a power jam. Windy City has given a, a, quite a few power jams in this bout as Zoe Trocious, I believe, has picked up a minor. And she is your lead jammer as she finally clears the pack with 43 seconds left in this jam. A very hard fought lead jammer status. Three on three in the pack as this power jam continues. Naptown's largest lead is right now at 21 points and Windy City trying to erase that. They're trying to claw into it now. Zoe Trocious has packed one blocker. Majestic is holding well at the front, however. She's going to the penalty box now. Naptown filling up the penalty box all but briefly as a moves Bush. The Naptown jammer will be standing as this next jam starts. She says she, uh, with her fingers, shows she has six seconds left. Although I, I'm not seeing very well. How many fingers did she hold up? I can't see from this <laughs> distance. She's, oh, I, I see she, she held up okay. again. Six All fingers. Right, there we go. Six. So she says six uh, seconds left. Naptown's going to take a knee. I'm a hurt you. Dora the Destroyer, the only two blockers left for Naptown for Windy City. They'll throw out Old Dirty Go-Go as well as Tori Adore and uh, Georgia on your behind. So Varla Vendetta gets a six-second head start as she hits the pack. Dora the Destroyer holding that line. 
But Varla Vendetta sweeps around the outside. She is your lead jammer for the Windy City Roller All-Stars. Amuz Bush returns to the pack for her team in White Naptown, trying to work around old Dirty Go-Go. The pack comes to a complete standstill as Varla Vendetta hits the pack on her scoring pass. Dora the Destroyer with a nice block. Varla wants a block to the head. She's not going to get it. Unbelievable work by Naptown on that one. A little misdirection. Amuz Bush made it look like she was going to go jammer on jammer with Varla baited her into going around and racing and then got clobbered by Dora the Destroyer. Meanwhile, Varla grabs five more before Bush can get around to put any on the board for her team. So we got a, an 11 point game. Naptown still clinging to that lead. Jackie Daniels gonna keep the, take the line for the Windy City Roller All-Star. She is the captain of the Windy City Roller All-Star. She was the 2010 league MVP. She started her career in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And she's also a member of the Bank Track League. Team legit. Amuz Bush relatively new to the sport, or I'm, I'm sorry, I made in America relatively new to the sport for as accomplished a jammer as she's been, playing a little over two seasons. Jackie Daniels, the wily veteran, getting lead jammer right when her team needs it. And Bork, 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 and Who's Your Mama trying to hold that front line against Made in America. Who's Your Mama, the last line of defense, trying to stay inside the engagement zone, holding off Made in America. Made in America's got some fight in her. And that battle won by Who's Your Mama as Jackie Daniels now on a scoring pass. Able to get through. We'll see how many points in just a second. Five point grand slam narrowing that lead. We've got a six point game. Who's Your Mama dealing a blow to another fellow Hoosier. That has kind of been the blocking story tonight. Windy City's managed to funnel her up and go one on one with the jammers when they go to the front of the pack. And she manages to deliver nearly every single time snubbing out another jammer. Jackie Daniels got leveled on the far side of the track. We didn't quite see it, but she was slow to get up there. As Made America finally clears the pack, Jackie Daniels on her second scoring pass. That's going to end the jam there. I believe that was a full two minutes, and we've got a two-point game, 87 to 85 at the 17.45 mark. Without calling anything too early, that was arguably the biggest jam that we will see tonight from Windy City. They needed those points and they got back within two. Naptown three jams ago was up by 21 points. So Windy City closing fast. They came out like a house of fire in the first jam going 10 points there to get them within seven after Naptown led by 17 going into the locker room. And now we see Willow Ho Flinch for Naptown in white and Beth Amphetamine for Windy City in black, and she cut the track. It's gonna be a minor cutting the track for Beth Amphetamine. Serial killer, booty blocking her. Serial, we saw her kind of taking a couple of knees earlier on. She's back after getting a skate to the rear end. And once again, we got a lead jammer from Windy City. This time it is Beth Amphetamine. Gonna see if we can get a lead change here. It'll take one pass as Willa Hofinch being held up by Georgia on your behind. Again, Willa trying to bait the uh, Windy City jammer Beth Amphetamine into engaging with her. She whiffed on it, but had she been able to do that, we saw this earlier, she could just deke it and continue to go on. Willa Hoflinch now in scoring position. And that's going to end the jam. We'll see how many points for Windy City. Two tie point game. Tie, I should say. 87 to 87. A zero differential. Yes, that's right. I should and say. There have all only been two lead changes thus far. Chicago, uh, Windy City in a, has an opportunity here to take a lead again. 87 to 87. The only lead they held was in the very early part of the first half. They grabbed it at 28 to 21. Then Naptown grabbed it back at 42 to 28. And we're underway in a moose bouche. Does she have some room? The pack in a little bit loose. To, uh, two separate walls, Amouge Bouche pushing that front wall. Usually an advantage goes to the jammer in the front. But Zoe Trosh has got a lead on the inside, but taken out just as she was about oh, to get it in Amouge Bouche. That was a nasty collision. A bunch of players in on that one. Sargentina as well falling down. There were three players involved with Zoe Trocious. Everybody got back up and looks okay, but that really could have been bad. Zoe Trocious actually took a shot from our uh, Sargentina as they were both falling. 
And Zoe Trocious clears on her initial pass. A moose boosh here on a scoring pass, though, getting things back on track for the Naptown Roller Girls. And she's got some speed coming around. Who's your mama once again, that last line of defense. And it's a major penalty on a moose boosh Oh, this is a big one. She called the jam without having lead jam or status. And, uh, Zoe Trocious picked up a minor back block, but she did get through the pack. Five points for Zoe Trocious. Amuse Bouch has scored as well. We won't find out until she either leaves the penalty box or the end of the jam. Well, it certainly wasn't a grand slam, so we can safely say Windy City has taken the lead. And that's the third lead change of this bout. And Zoe Trocious trying to call off the jam, but she's not the lead jammer, so it's a minor. Yep. She's, I believe she picked up two minors at least, fourth. Well, she's hurting. Dora the Destroyer. Zoe Trocious is hurting, and that goes back to the large collision that happened earlier on. And she looked a little bit a, a little bit woozy after coming up, after having Sargentina fall on top of her. Right now, we only see two blockers out there for Naptown. They're having some penalty issues here, but they're run, they got things going pretty good right now. Zoe Trocious on her second scoring pass. This is going to go the full two minutes. Amuz Bush standing up the Naptown jammer. That was the full two minutes. I think, believe our, uh, our video clock was a little bit off there. Four more points for Windy City and Zoe Trocious. And a timeout by Naptown. They have to regroup here. And we look at the score. It is 92 to 91. 13 minutes and 44 seconds left to play in this timeout. You know what's cheap? Talk is cheap. You should check out their website, Talk is Cheap. And also, Papa Rocks would like to say where you will get hit in the mouth with a little bit of the South. That's Papa Roo. Papa Roo. It's French. It's Papa. I'm sorry. I'm not French. Well, he'll hit you in the mouth. Uh, with he should play. hit me in the mouth for that one. Yeah. I'll like, give myself my second penalty. You'd be justified by getting hit in the mouth, but they had some of those po' boys in the media lounge. Delicious. So 96 to 91, the score, Windy City over number four, Naptown. Naptown has controlled this for the most part. It's only the third lead change. Windy City's last lead change came five jams in when they grabbed the lead at 28 to 21. Naptown took it back at 42 to 28 and went into halftime leading by 17. Coming out of that, Windy City went on a charge for 10 points and has really been almost point for point for quite a ways until Naptown put their largest score up 87 to 66 and Wendy has been whittling it down until they retook the lead. And Varla Vendetta had a very brief power jam as Amuz Bush comes out of the penalty box. Varla Vendetta is clearing the pack. She is your lead jammer but Amuz Bush is right there so Varla's playing defense now trying to eat the baby trying to get Windy City's blockers to re-engulf her into the pack and oh, dirty go go with a hit and a second hit as she was falling down by Bork, Bork, Bork. A set and spike from Old Dirty Gogo -Go and Bork, Bork, Bork as Varla Vendetta is your lead jammer for the Windy City Roller All-Stars. That's the physicality that Naptown really needs to shy away from. They will not out-physical, if that's even a word, Windy City. They just can't do that. Cutting They're the not big enough and not strong enough. Cutting the track, a minor drawn by Ima Hertzu on Varla Vendetta. So Varla picking up some minors there. She is on a scoring pass again as Amuz Bush finally clears on her initial pass. Interesting to note the severity of some of these penalties. Both teams have been penalized often. And right there, a, a, a penalty that will cost Varla Vendetta cutting the track. Windy City picking up a lot of penalties here. And, and Amuz Bush all by her lonesome with five points on the board takes a tie right now, 96 to 96 on a power jam. Windy City's down to one blocker. Toriador is going to stop for a second at the penalty box. She's going to have to come back out onto the track as she's not able to go in the penalty box. Much confusion from Windy City right now. Old Dirty Go Go, the only blocker left for Windy City, and she's trying to pick up the pace and make sure that Naptown doesn't slow this one and give their jammer a shortened track. That's a moose bouche already 10 points. Naptown retook the lead with that grand salami. Five more points, four more points. I guess she didn't legally pass a blocker. The crowd doesn't like that call. 
but they are roaring. It is very loud here at the Indianapolis Convention Center in Indianapolis, Indiana, the site of monumental mayhem, and we ha do have monumental mayhem right now as the Naptown Roller Girls retake the lead 105 to 96. Fourth lead change of this bout. The winner will play Minnesota tomorrow at 620. The loser goes on to play number two Detroit at 420. And we got a power jam going on right now. It's made in America, two on two in the pack. A, lo a lot of skating area to go for with Made in America two on two with her jammers. It's Dora the Destroyer and Anna Slazia in white. And Made in America working it. And she gets taken out by Yvette Your Maker. It's going to be a major out of the, the engagement zone, major on Yvette Your Maker. And they will remain with two blockers. As Varla Vendetta is released from the penalty box. So no lead jammer yet. Made in America had a no pass, no points. So Varla Vendetta can get it. She does get it. She, she does call it off immediately, so zero points. Yeah, Made in America calling for a couple of points. I think that case can be made that she got to the rear of the pack before those whistles finished. Well, she got to the pack, but did she, I don't think she passed a blocker. And she wanted two, but that wouldn't be possible with two blockers in the penalty box. She could get three. Yeah. Yes, indeed. 105 to 98, Naptown's lead. They lead by seven. Their largest lead was 21. Naptown trying to play spoiler on their home floor. Only a seven point game. We are under the 10 minute mark. Jackie Daniels versus Majestic. Majestic through for lead jammer for the Naptown Roller Girls. Dora the Destroyer doing a nice job holding off Jackie Daniels as all three Naptown blockers get back in front of Jackie Daniels. Yeah, Dora not only sprung her jammer, but also did the business to keep Jackie Daniels at bay. Here comes Majestic, the transfer from Fort Wayne. She was Fort Wayne's captain, dips inside, calls it off, four points. What a nice cut by Majestic to get around old Dirty Gogo. There was just a little crack in the pack, and she was able to get through. Extending the lead, 11 points now for Naptown, 109 to 98. We Varla see. Vendetta to the line, Willa Hoflinch as well. This is going to be fast as we look at some of the pack mates in there as well. I'm a hurt you, Dora the Destroyer. Those two players can put on the Jets as well. So Blue Messiah is the pivot and Anastasia round out the rest of the Naptown blockers. A very slow grinding pack. Willa Hoflinch has some momentum now. Who's your mom the last line of defense? She takes a hit, but lead jammer, Willa Hoflinch. I'm, a, or, uh, I'm sorry, who's your mama had Ho Flinch in her crosshairs. Will a nice stutter step to avoid that one. Here comes Varla Vendetta, about a half a track length behind. So Willow Hofinch now engaging the pack. Deb Autry and Sargentina trying to hold her off. Willow Hofinch makes a nice move to the outside. One blocker to beat. Varla Vendetta also scoring points. We'll see what the totals are here. Four to three. A one-point victory there for Naptown. That was kind of a risk versus reward play. Willa Hoflinch decided I could either call it off here or I could go for points and try to outscore my opponent. She made the wise move and went for more points. 13, 113 to 101. Might have been a greedy play, but in this case, it most certainly worked. We're coming down the home stretch. We're under the eight minute mark. Is this the bout Windy City Falls in the North region? As Jackie Daniels will be jamming against Amuz Bush in this one. Amuz Bush in white. Jackie Daniels in black for the Windy City Roller All Stars. A slow grinding pack. The penalty box is empty. It's been a long time since we could say that. Jackie Daniels through. Lead jammer. The Wiley veteran knows what it takes to get through that messy of a pack. And it was hitting all over the place. And Amuz Bush goes flying. Bork, Bork, Bork with a huge jammer takeout. And another little shot there. Varla Vendetta, I mean, Jackie Daniels now on a scoring pass. Dr. Vroom giving a penalty to Bork, Bork, Bork. And here comes uh, uh, Amuz Bush probably seeing stars, and that's not on her helmet. After those hits from Bork, 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 four more, five more for Jackie Daniels. And a power jam as we had a cutting the track major on Amuz Bush. Here come the Windy City Roller All Stars. Jackie Daniels on another scoring pass here. Power jams are where tides turn, and so far, Naptown's managed to really keep it clean, but not at this opportunity as Jackie Daniels trying to get her team back in this one. 113 to 106 is your score. 
Naptown leading the number one, Windy City. And Jack Daniels gets through for a five point grand slam. We're down to a micro pack right now. Only two on one in the pack. Jackie Daniels has one blocker to contend with. That's Blue Messiah. And Blue Messiah just goes down. Yeah, serial Clark. killer tried to make her way to a full penalty box. This bout is getting out of hand. As Man. one more player for Windy City heads. Old Dirty Go-Go. And Windy City has retaken the lead. We've got 10 seconds left in this jam. And it's going to be a block to the head on Tori Adore. It's getting kind of ugly out there. Jackie Daniels, that's going to end the jam on time. Four more points for Jackie Daniels. 120 to 113 with five minutes and 36 seconds left to go. Penalties everywhere we look. We're going to get some discussion from the referees, I do believe. Now the fifth lead change at hand, and if you want to talk to us on Twitter, Go to hashtag talk, the number two, WFTDA. And we got a tweet coming to us. It is from Smashing Two Pieces. Is it wrong that I love eating babies? Yes. Uh, and I am judging. And I am absolutely judging you. That well, is wrong. That, I will not stand for that. That is a roller derby talking. play. It's a I play. Know, I know. You know. I took it literally. Interesting lineup with so many penalty issues going on right now. Sargentina is going to take the Jammer Star for the Windy City Roller, Roller All-Stars. Interesting. The, and, and, and is this a common occurrence no, that you see for Windy no, City? No, she is a power blocker known for taking out Jammers. So it is a little bit peculiar to see uh, Sargentina wearing the Jammer Star. Although it looks like we're going to switch it out now. Bork, 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 the rookie well, power still, blocker. Same deal. <laughs> yeah, same deal. You're trading bulldozer for bulldozer against a speed player in Made in America. An interesting matchup at the line. This crowd is so into this game right now. Naptown's home crowd going crazy. There's a few Windy City Roller fans out there making some noise as well. But a definite advantage here, I think, for the Naptown Roller Girls playing at home in this match here. A very educated roller derby crowd as well. It is. It is, and, and normally when they play at the Pepsi Coliseum, their normal home, they're getting three to 4,000 or more. They had 5,500 at the Fort Wayne bout this season, a rather large drawing team. And three on three will be the matchup for these teams as the officials are continuing to confer. The winner of this one we'll see tomorrow night, Sunday, the marquee bout 620 against Minnesota, the number three seed. They knocked off number two Detroit at 1 o'clock this afternoon. The loser will play Detroit, and the winner of this, barring everything, will make it into the playoffs. They will get the number one or two seed. The loser will have to fight Detroit tomorrow for third place for their opportunity to go to Denver. This has been a very physical match. I think we're going to see some fallout from this timeout. It's, as soon as we find out, we will let you know what is happening here in this timeout. Well, I say this almost literally, they can't put any more people in the penalty box. <laughs> no, they can't. Everybody has been penalized <laughs> in rapid succession, especially in these last four jams. That's been one of the stories of this playoff. The team that's penalized less often has generally won. And if you look at that factor and that factor alone, that may determine everything tonight. There are people running around with flags. There are beer bottles running around with flags in the Indianapolis Convention Center. It is a raucous crowd here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I have to tell you, I think the, the Brew City beer leaders are sort of split. I think their loyalties are split for who they're cheering. That's uh, one of the beer leaders running around in a beer bottle wearing a Chicago flag. And, and I, I, gotta, I gotta wonder about that. Is that like, you know, unconstitutional or something? Milwaukee loving Chicago? Uh, is that okay? Are you cool with it? I have songs I could sing right now, but they're somewhat inappropriate. Okay. So maybe I shouldn't go there All right. on WFTDA.com. I hope you're watching the high-quality stream. And if you're not, why not? 20 bucks, and you can see everything. Everything. Talk to WFTDA is our hashtag on Twitter as well if you want to join in the conversation. I'm Danny Mack. 
along with Mumble. We're here in Indianapolis, the Indiana Convention Center, downtown Indianapolis. Monumental Mayhem, the nickname of this 2011 North Central Region tur uh, playoff. A lot of people are going to need some Dr. Hauschka bruise healer after this one. The official bruise healer of the WFTDA. Timeout going on four minutes. We've called this just among ourselves. It's kind of a little announcer haha -ha, upset Saturday because, you know, we feel compelled to give things names. So it, it, this sort of, for most of this bout, has been going along with that. Naptown had the lead for most of it. Windy City has taken it back at 120 to 113. We're about underway here. Bork, Bork, Bork jamming against Made in America. An interesting look for Windy City. And Made in America up against a Windy City blocker. That's Bork, 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 who will get lead jammer. That long delay was due. They were just confirming penalties, many major penalties. Bork, Bork, Bork has a major track cut. And Made in America got lead jammer, thought Bork, Bork, Bork got out. She called it off immediately, but she will get a power jam opportunity for a moose bush wow. in the next jam. I think Made in America is serving the same like verbal penalty that I did. I thought Bork 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 had lead jam. I think Bork 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 did too. So did Made in America. That's the risk you run when you put a, an inexperienced jammer at the line. They're just not as agile as some of those other jammers. She's a blocker, plain and simple. Yes, indeed. Windy City has four people in the penalty box right now. <laughs> Only one blocker out there. Two against one in the pack. And yes, that is possible to have four. If there's a player standing, their vacated seat can go to a player just recently penalized. It's a rare occurrence and can only last 10 seconds, but it did. It happened. Who's your mom of the lone blocker trying to hold off a moose boosh So far, so good. 20 seconds into the jam. Speedy pack, Georgia on your behind, trying to get on her horse and catch up to the three wall, or the two wall rather, of Naptown. Amuz Bush got hit by Hoosier Mama and taken down. That was a giant hit I, from Hoosier Mama. As now we have three on three in the pack. And Amuz Bush staying on one skate. She took a hit from Old Dirty Gogo, -Go, able to stay in bounds, and now she's charging at Hoosier Mama. Hoosier Mama rides her out of bounds and retreats back just a little bit. And a block to the head on someone out there. It's on Hoosier Mama. Yeah, Boosh holding her helmet. I think the block to the head was to her. And she gets around and grabs lead jammer. Amuz Boosh with lead jammer. Just over three minutes to go. A seven-point lead for the Windy City Roller All-Stars. Bork, Bork, Bork back out of the penalty box. It's even strength from the jammer line. Amuz Boosh, I think, shaken up a little bit. She looks really tentative going into the back of that pile. Bork, 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 not normally a jammer. Interesting to have her out there. It's a scoring pass. We got a, four points. We had a cutting the track minor, so it's a three-point game with two minutes and 40 seconds left to go. 24 seconds in this jam. Bork, Bork, Bork clears the pack on her initial pass. And here comes a Mouge Bouche trying to retake the lead. She's got 16 seconds to go. Two on two in the pack. I think this is going to be a hit it and quit it scenario. Gets a whip from Serial Killer as soon as she engages. We will probably see her put those hands on the hips. Here comes Bork, Bork, Bork trying to catch the pack as well. And that ends the jam. 0-0, zero, zero. still a three-point game. Two minutes, 10 seconds left. We're coming down to the wire. Is this the upset we've been looking for? Is Naptown going to punch their ticket to Denver? Will the Windy City Rollers streak end? Or will the veterans from Chicago, Illinois keep cool? and bring it home. We will see as the penalty box both have two skaters from both teams in the box. Jackie Daniels versus Made in America, here we go. This is giving me all kinds of bad ma uh, maladies, heart palpitations. Jackie Daniels lead jam. And Made in America is about a third of a track behind her. So we'll see how Jackie Daniels plays this. Fourth minor on Sargentina, the pack remains small. Jackie Daniels scoring points. She calls it off. So they extend their lead, three more points. Six point game, very important. That's two passes now. Timeout call by Naptown as they're gonna regroup. And what else is important here? A 123 to 117 lead, Windy City and Naptown. The time clock 
it becomes a huge factor. There's a minute and 15 seconds left in this bout. So presumably that's one jam. Now, as soon as that starts, the jam clock, or as I'm sorry, as soon as that ends, as soon as that one minute and 15 seconds ticks off, the jam clock becomes the final say in the amount of time left in this bout. I was told to read this by my boss, so I'm going to read it. We got a tweet at hashtag talk to WFTDA.com. Derby Randy Pan, you guys rule so hard, I started a Twitter account to let you know. All right. Thanks, Randy Pan. But this game is more important. Yep, a minute and 15 left. Naptown, number four seed, hosting the 2011 North Central Region playoff trying to be the first team to deliver a loss in North Central history to Windy City. All right, five seconds about. All right, we got the hand held by our whistleblower. Five seconds till we start. Jackie Daniels, a moose bouche Here we go, one minute and 13 seconds to go. This jam has begun. This jam is underway, I do believe. It is, the pack whistle has blown. Players starting off, I'ma hurt you, and Serial Killer started off for Naptown in white. Windy City in black, Naptown falls down. They have no jammer right now. J uh, Jackie Daniels fighting with Serial Killer. Jackie Daniels gets lead jammer status, trying to bring it home. Amuz Bush gets tangled up with Old Dirty Go Go. It's a major penalty on Amuz Bush. That's Jackie, Jackie Daniels now the lone jammer. She can run out the clock. That's the dagger. That's the dagger. A, the penalties have told this story tonight, and yet again, chalk that in the storytelling column. One more penalty for Amuz Bush, her third as a jammer, and she is frustrated sitting in the sin bin. 18 seconds left in the game clock. As soon as that ticks out, Jackie Daniels can call this one off, and her team will advance. Jackie Daniels trying to play it cool. The clock winds down. The whole crowd is counting down the clock. Windy City escapes the Naptown Roller Girls. Wait, ja Jackie Daniels is your lead jammer. She hasn't called it off. Now she does. The Windy City Rollers escape the Naptown Roller Girls and will advance to play the Minnesota Roller Girls for the one seed in the North Center Central. This is a classic. 128. 117, the unofficial final here in Indianapolis. You cannot hang your head if you're a Naptown Tornado Siren. You did what almost no team has ever done. You've brought the narrowest of margin, tied for Mad Roland back in 2009, the narrowest margin of victory for Windy City. You held a lead almost the entire bout, and you played one hell of a bout. The final score, Windy City Rollers 128 to Naptown Roller Girls 117.